No stranger to us has come here before, you know, but I just want you to get excited about uh, the message that God is going to have for us through this figure. I uh, just want to pray for him, for his, uh, his, he noted that he has been deported from China. He has been spending many years in Vietnamese, he's a Vietnamese uh, missionary in China, he has been many years in China uh, doing the work of God and so passionate this man. He's a disciple of Reverend Paul I. Remember Paul I that came also for our missions convention? Uh, uh, so he's a disciple, Paul I is his mentor. And um, he's that passionate for the work of the kingdom of God, even in China. Now at this juncture, even I mean it was just over, um, he was arranging for the missions, they call it a sending out missions convention. You know, they're trying to raise up new leaders for 661 cities. You know, and uh, while doing so, the Chinese authorities kicked him out of China. But his family is in China. And so he has been separated from his family. But even in that separation, deportation, he's still sending out you know, notices to ask people to, to sponsor some of the pastors to go for the uh, conference that's in the convention, the mission convention that's in Hong Kong. And so, even in his own personal need, you know, with his family and all that, but he's putting that aside because the work of the kingdom of God has higher priority for him, you know, at this juncture. The sacrifices that he has made for this. And I got so worried, I don't know whether he could be able to come for our missions weekend, you know, I would try to contact him. Uh, at one time, his phone was uh, was confiscated by the authorities. No way to connect with him. So we tried huh? ways and means. You know, even with Pastor Ben, I say, do you know anybody? You know, so for Mike, thank God, finally we got him and say, yes, I will still come. But the thing is, you know what? He said, I will come with my family. But the family has been trying a few times now to get out of China, but the authorities have stopped them. Refused to let them get out of China to join him, you know, but he's still coming. And we're going to pray, pray, you know, that he will be able, they, the family, he has two young boys, okay, they'll be able to join him, all right, to come up, you know, uh, they're trying to join him in Hong Kong, but not able to, but prayerfully that he'll be able, they will be able to come and join him in Malaysia, you know, and, uh, incredible story i believe you know deep down in my heart my spirit that it was not by chance that i know suddenly i thought oh, hey let's go invite pastor joshua again you know and god has a purpose for all this and the fact that he's able to come and share his story with you we are very very privileged lots of people you know because god is just putting a message in his heart for all of us so don't miss the missions weekend on starting on Friday, the launch. All right, Saturday there will be a seminar in the morning that he's going to conduct about tent making. Uh, he's basically in China on, on tent making in a sense, setting up uh, uh, different different works. But the authorities has one by one, you know, attempted to close them, close them down. You know, so so he's the right man to talk about how about tent making mission. Okay, so that is in the morning. It's all in the brochure that you came in with today. There's a slip of paper that will tell you the venues and the time. All right, at the same time, there's also a one-gen seminar uh, for especially young adults. Uh, remember that I shared with you about Starfish Foundation Sabah, that Baron, uh, Pastor Terrence, right? He is also coming, okay, and to talk to our young people, okay. Uh, his wife wrote the book Right, there is a uh, really blessing people, you know, young adults about going out and leaving a legacy, you know. So he's got young adults, you know. Any one of you is actually, if you want to join for this uh, call, this seminar, you are welcome to. All right, and and I think I'm very excited also. Last Sunday, last week, the Chinese service they had their own. Uh, they started with their missions weekend, you know. Last year's pledge was really incredible. Because, you know, our English, we have about 84% so far. I'm not sure about the latest percentage yet, uh, fulfilling their pledge. The Chinese congregation, almost 100%. Wow. That's 
Oh, 
they rented a shop lot over there, then uh, now they are staying on the first floor and the ground floor is for the service uh, as you want to watch earlier earlier, but but empty uh, you share the latest update to the third of uh, July. Okay, I'll pass the pass the green door. Saya percaya waktu itu Reverend Julian uh, bilang cakap pada saya, kamu jangan mulai mulai dulu pelayanan, kamu kelompok sel dulu. Tapi saya hati saya tidak senang kalau sel grup hari dulu saya beribadah dengan siapa. Jadi kami dengan iman jalan dan setelah itu kami adakan penginjilan satu bulan kemudian uh, anak-anak kecil datang ke rumah dan saya menangkap visi bahwa ini saatnya untuk buka anak sekolah minggu. Jadi kami mulai sore anak-anak sekolah minggu, belum hari minggu kami mulai mulaikan uh, latih mereka dan hari minggu Tuhan kirim satu jiwa anak-anak ibadah hari minggu orang dewasa yang tadinya saya sedia untuk korba hari minggu hanya saya korba untuk anak sekolah minggu. Jadi dan setelah itu selama satu bulan kami tambah ada sembilan orang uh, anak sekolah minggu dan puji Tuhan pagi ini Saya terima mesin dari saya ada 15 orang dewasa. Sekolah minggu kita belum pernah hadir karena sekolah minggu kita dimulakan pukul ah, ini baru mulai karena sekolah minggu di tempat kita di sana jadi berdoa supaya ada pertambahan jiwa dan uh, pelayanan di Ngambang adalah gereja yang baru dikembangkan oleh pemerintah. Kalau di sini macam distrik dan di Kalimantan disebut kabupaten. Jadi di situ baru tahun 2004 dan sekarang baru ber, ber, berkembang memulai tahun 2010. Jadi di sana pusat bandar kalau kita pus, pusing pusing habis hanya 15 menit habis. <tuk> Jadi ke waktu saya datang di sini saya berkata Tuhan terima kasih saya hidup lagi. <tuk> nah uh, setelah kami uh, permasalahan di sana kebanyakan Anak-anak sekolah di sana adalah yang jauh dari orang tua, sehingga anak-anak banyak yang hidupnya tidak tidak benar, ada pengaruh sosial, bahkan ada saya dengar sampai menjual diri anak-anaknya hanya untuk keperluan ekonomi. Lalu uh, ada banyak orang Kristen di sana, tapi orang Kristen di sana tidak mencerminkan hidup sebagai orang Kristen. Lalu ada banyak sinkretisme, ya, ada banyak budaya-budaya tempatan masuk ke dalam gereja. Dan beberapa minggu yang lalu kami dapat tantangan dari orang-orang Roman Katolik anak-anak sekolah minggu tidak dihalang untuk datang dan mengalami penurunan sampai hanya delapan orang. Tapi minggu lalu walaupun ada halangan itu ada lima belas anak sekolah minggu datang. Dan uh, pendidikan di Kalimantan khususnya di kami di kota di bandar kami itu adalah pendidikan yang uh, terendah termasuk terendah di seluruh Indonesia. Dan kota ini juga kota yang terbelakang, ter, kota yang tertinggal dari 10 kota terbelakang di Indonesia. Jadi ada banyak banyak hal yang perlu dibenahi di, 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 di Ngambang. Jadi saat ini juga untuk itu kami dalam gereja kami kami sedang melakukan supaya melalui visi Singambang 
berdampak bagi kota ini. Kami memulaikan pelayanan uh, tuition uh, bahasa Inggris. Uh, kami tidak dapat lakukan semua dan uh, tuition ini diuntukkan kepada anak-anak yang memang tidak mampu dan kepada anak-anak hamba Tuhan atau pastor-pastor yang memang di bawah standar hidupnya dan kami memasukkan mereka karena Reverend Julian pesan kepada kami jangan publikasikan dulu sampai tadi pagi karena saya harus taat kepada pemimpin jadi saya tidak mau publikasikan nah, dan kemarin saya ada diskusi dengan Reverend Julian dan akhirnya Reverend Julian izinkan jadi semalam sudah ada daftar sekitar 22 orang anak yang bersedia untuk dilatih ini Nah kami juga ingin membuka beberapa pelayanan di sana Kami ingin mem, seperti home mission uh, Home mission bukan home mission untuk tinggal orang-orang tetap gereja Tetapi untuk menampung anak-anak yang di, tidak ada dibantu oleh orang tuanya Dan kami akan tampung mereka supaya mereka dibekali kerohaniannya Dan mereka berdampak dalam setiap di sekolah-sekolah mereka Dan ini uh, jangka uh, panjangnya jadi perlu doa dari setiap kita Dan sekarang kursi sudah tidak cukup Karena sudah 15 orang, kami hanya sedia 20 orang Jadi doakan supaya kami boleh terus berkembang Dan kami boleh terus memajukan pelayanan Tuhan di PC Singabang Atas nama gereja PC Singabang Kami ucapkan terima kasih dari gereja ini Father, I just pray that right now, Lord, the anointing the rest of Pastor Crandall, your servant of God, who has such a heart for you, for your kingdom's work of God. Even right now, Lord, we are hearing stories of God, testimonies of how you are blessing the work over there through your servant, through his family. We pray that God, your anointing will always rest upon him, that God will prosper the work of Father God, that those who, know, who do not know you, O oh God, will come to know the self-saving grace of, of Jesus Christ through that work of God in our bank, O oh Father. I pray that God you will protect, O oh God, the work as well, provide for the family, watch over this family, O oh God, even as they serve you, that God you bring in people, O oh God, souls, O oh God, that will add it into your kingdom through this work, O oh Father God. Even as I pray over Pastor Crandall, may Lord you use him mightily, O oh God, that Lord his heart will always be humble before you, that God, your heart, his heart of God will always be soft before you. That Lord, he will always seek your face, O God, and seek the leading of your Holy Spirit. That Lord, he will be empowered by the power of the Holy Spirit upon his life and ministry, O Father God. Thank you, Lord, for this man, for this servant, as we commit him to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Right, we are really taking up a bit of time, but I just still need to do something. All right, we're going to pray for a couple that is uh, going to leave us, uh, going to Germany for work. All right, they have been such a blessing to us, you know, uh, in this church, uh, serving and all that. And um, that is uh, Rani and Jai. Come. Newly married, all right, and going to conquer the world. <laughs> like uh, going off to Germany, huh? All right, so stay away from the football press. <laughs> All right, uh, so we're gonna pray for them. Don't know whether how long they will be there. All right, but uh, God's still, still going to use them. All right, wherever they they are, and um, hope they'll be back with good stories, testimonies, you know, and their lives will be a blessing to the Germans. <laughs> when I first came to Malaysia back in 2009, I was in Nottingham. Um, KRG was like uh, my family away from home. Uh, this church played a very big role in the formative years of my life, and uh, I will never forget this family that was always here with me, always supporting me. Uh, I will miss Auntie Chai a lot. She was like my mom in Malaysia. I don't think she's here tonight. And it was very difficult to say goodbye to her uh, last night. Um, but yeah, we'll miss each and every single one of you. Uh, do keep us in your prayers. Uh, moving to another country comes with its challenges and excitement. 
uh, but we do hope that you never forget us. Keep us in your WhatsApp groups. Update. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, come and spring for them. This is their last service today, yeah? and so we put them to off. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this couple, the Rani and the Jai. Thank you for bringing them, Lord, even to our church. They have been such a blessing serving you and serving each one of us here, oh God. Father, I pray that God even as they make a move to Germany, oh God, may you go with them. That God, you will be with them, oh God, every step of the way. Even as they adjust to life over in Germany, that God you bring them to the good church, that they can plant their spiritual roots in. Yes. That God, your Lord, they will grow over there as well. Yes. Through their lives of God, many others of God will be blessed, will be brought to your kingdom as well. Yes. That God, Lord, they will be influencers of God over there, Lord. I pray, Father, you use them, O oh God, as your servants, O oh God, the Lord. Lead them, O oh God, even as they seek your face, that God, they will not turn to the left and the right of God, but the cross of Jesus will always be before them. Yes. And I pray that God, Lord, you will provide for them. God, watch over them, their safety, O oh God, even more protection. O oh God, you just will use them for the work of your kingdom over there yes. as well. And God, we will just uh, be connected still, O oh God, even with this future family here, that God, you will continue to be able to Give them, God, your abundant blessing and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, today I'm not preaching. Somebody is really, very anxiously. <laughs> All right, he's, uh, you know, God is just blessing our church people who, before even they preach here in, the, in our own church, you know, and God is calling them to preach in other churches, you know, so. And uh, we just want to give them the opportunity to really share the word of God. Um, this man has not been saved many, many years, but uh, but he is just so passionate for God. He has this, this really acute sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, you know, to be able to see visions, you know, that is so sensitive, his heart is, his spirit is just so sensitive to the leading of the Spirit. And a uh, man who really, very deeply involved in any ministries you can think of, you know, and people are just looking to him because he has such a heart to serve God. He has such a heart that loves God. You know? So we want to invite now Brother Bong to come and share with us. Right now, we think he's coming with a child every day. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Kevin. Good morning, church. Good morning. I'm not used to standing at the pulpit. So I've been standing in front of uh, educators all over Malaysia. Thank you, Pastor Kevin, for the trust in me to stand at this pulpit and share today with each and every one of you. And uh, I ask each and every one of you to give me your ears so that whatever I say will be imprinted in your heart. And let's pray. Thank you, God, for this wonderful day, Lord God. Thank you for using me as your vessel of honor to glorify your name, God. Lord, whatever I speak, let it be, let it be from you, God, and not from my own personal uh, liking or whatever personal agenda, Lord God. Lord, bless each and every one of us in this congregation, God. I pray all this in the wonderful and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 You see, about uh, over two months ago, on uh, Saturday morning, when my wife and I was coming from home for this um, morning watch, little do we know that when we reach this uh, one field, Jalan one field, that is about to enter to Mechua, my car got punctured. And uh, it was punctured. So it was near the side, uh, just after this uh, Beichui restaurant. So I, you know, for such a long time, over I think uh, seven or eight years, I've never opened and uh, up a tire before. So such a long time that so I took the spare tire on the back and then started to uh, do whatever necessary. So use the whatever crowbar and try to open the tire. 
he will have jump on it, nothing happened. <laughs> so I was quite panicking. And it was already 6.25. Only five more minutes to the uh, morning watch. So as we were, as I was doing it, my wife saw a Malay man, a young man passing by. So she called this young man to help me. And this young man, it was um, because by that time it was already 6.55. They said that there's no chance to go to morning watch anymore. So this young man, he said he has opened up tires, you know, to take out tires before. So he, he said, give me a moment. He called up this box. He's supposed to open the door of a shop at 7 o'clock sharp. So he called up and he helped us through and and he put up, I put in the spare tire, and I was ready. That was already nearly 7:30. So there goes the morning watch. But we were so grateful that a young man made himself available for us at that very crucial moment when we really need help. There's a man. God sent a man to help us. So today my topic is. Be available for God's glory. Now, when Pastor Kevin uh, asked at me on the 12th of May, uh, asked me whether I can share with the congregation or not, I said yes. So I, I was praying. I have a few topics in my head that I could share uh, with the congregation, with all of you. But the Holy Spirit impress upon me this particular topic be available for God's glory so little bit I know that last few months or two months or so and many weeks there have been a lot of preaching pastors Kelvin, Pastor uh, Nikki, Pastor Sue have been teach, uh, teaching us about serving and also about servanthood so the Holy Spirit must have loved this church so much that he wanted me to speak about making ourselves available for his glory, not for our own self-agenda. So when I, you know, we reviewed our homiletics, Pastor Daniel taught us how to uh, preach in sermon and so on. He mentioned one particular thing. He said, but as you prepare for your sermon, let it be a devotion. So when I have this topic, almost every day when do my devotion, ask God, what should I say to all my brethren in this uh, wonderful church about availability for God? So my the um, verse that I want to share with each and every one today is on Mark 1, 17 to 18. Mark 1, 17 to 18. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. This how all these, among all the twelve disciples, many of them just follow Jesus. They don't look back. They don't look at uh, the parents. They don't look at the family. They just immediately make themselves available. So before we go further, let me um, define the word available first. According to Miriam Webster Dictionary, it says, if we are available, we are present or ready for immediate use. The word stress here is immediate use. And also qualified or willing to do something or to assume responsibility. That means we have to take up responsibility. And also the Oxford Dictionary says, available means able to use or obtain at someone's disposal. In this case, it is at God's disposal. So the meaning of be available to God there are three key words here. Be willing, that is our heart condition. Be present, that is our body condition. We are bodily, physically there. 
and also be ready. That means our mind condition must also be engaged. So, if we are be willing, present, and ready for immediate use by God. So, availability to God is being willing to adjust our own design, our own uh, priorities, our own schedule, our own agenda, our own plan to God's plan. And our own plan becomes secondary to God's plan and also to help others. So this is a very important thing. So we can see even the, the one, the, uh, what had been preached about how Abraham, how Enoch and all make themselves available for God. And even the missionary, the sound we have seen this uh, pastor from Indonesia, is making himself available. And next week, during the mission week, even Pastor uh, Dong is making people available for God in for China. Now, there are many, if you search through the Bible, there are more than 56 verses talking about availability. All of these 56 verses, I choose a few. In Isaiah 6 8, you know, when Isaiah was being heard the voice of God, then who shall I send? And who will go for us? Immediately Isaiah said, Here am I, send me. So we must have the attitude of Isaiah. And also in Romans 14 12, you know, whether we are weak or strong, the presence of Christ. It says, So then each of us will give an account of himself to God. That means at the day of judgment. God will ask, what have you done for me? When Christ asks us, then we'll be able to answer that. Have we made ourselves available for Christ? Now, in Deuteronomy 28, verse 47 to 48 says, Because you did not serve the Lord, your God, joyfully and gladly in time of prosperity, therefore in hunger and thirst, in nakedness and dire poverty, you will serve the enemies of the Lord sent against you. He will put an iron yoke on your neck until he has destroyed you. So if we don't serve God, then we may serve the enemies. And the yoke will be upon us. So I think these two verses is strong enough to justify that we must be available for God. Now, what is God's glory? And how do we glorify God? Just now we'll be worshipping with the song. It's just coincidental that uh, we worship the, to glorify God. Now, God's glory is the infinite beauty of His holiness manifested in all His attributes combined together. And it is eternal. God's glory is eternal. From long past and until eternity. And in Isaiah 43, 7 says that God created us for His glory, not for our own self-glory. And we are the vessel which contain His glory. We are just a vessel. So today, this morning, I'm just a vessel for God to share with you all. Now, what is God's glory? To glorify, how do we glorify God? To glorify God means to acknowledge his greatness and give him honor if we give him honor we say god i'm sorry i have no time for you is that giving god honor no way and by praising and worshiping him even we help others we also praise god we also worship god and primarily because he and he alone deserve to be praised and honored and so this is very important. Now, when usually when I was talking to all the principals and so on, I said, when I point one finger to you, four fingers pointing back to me. And this serves as a reminder for myself. You know, what I have been sharing with you is part of my devotion. And I constantly remind myself about it. And I think each and every one of us can do likewise and remind each and every one of us. Now, available to others, being available to others is a form of praise 
and is pleasing to God. This is in Hebrew 13, verse 15 to 16. Now, our offerings today are not about trading livestock anymore because Christ has sacrificed himself for us. So what is what are we bringing to church and also to our brethren? So our sacrifice today is what flows out of our heart. <coughs> to love and adore our Lord, we are to be so full of love for our Lord that it flows out to those who are around us. So if we really love God, you know, our love will flow out. So we will do anything that is to help our brethren or even people outside. So this is what we must make ourselves available, not only for people in the church, but also people in the community. So it is very important. Now, I'm so glad that in this church, there are a lot of people who have made themselves available. I was asking Pastor Kelvin, how many of us are involved? You know, this church, Pastor Kelvin said around 50%. There are some churches, there is what we call the parable rule, 20 80. 20% serving the church for the other 80%, including myself. But in our church, a lot of people are serving. So this is the recent uh, visit to the elderly uh, in the Love and Care, where you can see even with children and they begin to hug the, the, the um, inmates there, or the elderly people over there, to show love to them. Next. So, this is uh, our cafe ministry. They go out and show our love to these people. They are so needy in terms of uh, things. So, we just start giving them, but we share our love. That our church, our people, filled with people who have the love of God. Okay. Next, this is uh, also another, you can recognize each and every one of yourself. It is only an example of money. I'm sure there are a lot more other fails that I have to do. And this is in the Gideon ministry. Recently, we went to distribute Bibles to the others. This is uh, uh, Brother Tam and also uh, Brother C.S. also uh, going out to my uh, Okay, now, these are our care acts, what we can do available. If we love our Lord, our love, the love of our Lord should flow out from ourselves, from our hearts to others. Now, sometimes due to certain circumstances, we do the opposite action. Now, sometimes we are maybe we are in not the right mood, we are caring, we are hassling a little bit of things we hassle. Within brethren, we are irritated sometimes, and we also inconvenience others. So, this implies the tendency to ignore and put people down when we actually should embrace and lift them up. So, if we at least if we don't not able to lift them up, we don't get irritated with them, we, get, we don't shout at them, or we just gossip about them, getting angry with them. So. If we do this, this will cancel off whatever we, we ourselves, the love of God, and our church love of, for God. And so that these people in the community will say, that, what our church it is? You talk about love of God. It will nullify whatever we are trying to do in the church. If we go out and we get angry with people, and within ourselves, we also quarrel. So that's not a good way of doing it. Now, I would like to share with you an interview um, by Paul Bradshaw of Rick Warden. You know, Pastor Rick Warden is a writer of uh, Purpose Driven Life. He said, I quote, In a nutshell, life is a preparation for eternity. We were not made to last forever. And God wants us to be with Him in heaven. One day, my heart is going to stop, and that will be the end of my body, but not the end of me. I may live 60 to 100 years on earth, but I am not going to spend, I'm going to spend trillions of years in eternity. So this is a warm-up act, a dress, the dress rehearsal. God wants us to practice on earth what we will 
do forever in eternity. So we were made by God and for God. And until we figure that out, life isn't going to make sense. Remember, we are made by God and for God, for His glory. So this is just a dress with us all. But sooner or later, each and every one of us will part ways. Now, I'm also quoting what uh, this uh, James Hudson Taylor was saying. You now, James Hudson Taylor spent 51 years. At the age of 17, he agreed to go mission to mission in China. So he spent 51 years in China. And he said at the end, almost the end of uh, his mission day, he said, I used to ask God if he would come and help me. For well, most of us, when we accept the Christ, we ask, God, can you do this for me? We are asking God to be available to us. So later on, he said, then I asked if I could do, I could come and help him. But actually, what God wants is not to us to go and help him to do things. He is an only important God. So all he wants is, I, he said, that's at this uh, Hudson Taylor said, I ended up by asking God to do his own work through me. All we need is to make ourselves available. Yeah. So, my first important point here I'd like to stress is, what does God want from us? After you're hearing all this. Now, number one, God does not want our ability as much as our availability. That is our state of being available. Now, God is an omnipotent God. He can do miracles through us. So He doesn't want just our ability. Now, God wants us to in a place, an attitude where He can walk through us. And we shine in our abilities. Whenever we're talent, the music talent, we shine in our ability. But God shines in availability. Even though we even we may have all the ability, but if we don't come and serve in the worship team, it's useless. Alright? So people are impressed with ability. Whatever we can do, people are so impressed. But God is impressed with availability. And practice improves our ability. But what will improve our ability? Faith in God will improve our ability. And not everyone is able, but everyone is available. You know, whether whatever shape, whatever ability, whether we are in sickness or whatever, no talent, whatever it is, God, can, if we are available, God can use us. So our ability draws our natural talent, but availability draws the spiritual gifts. You know, when the Holy Spirit gives us spiritual gifts, then He will make ourselves available. We can make full use of that. Now, what <clears throat> next thing is that God wants us to glorify Him only. <laughs> because our God is a jealous God. So, God does not want glory to come from men or from the idols of men and from nature. That means whatever we do, we must glorify Him. The glory is His, not ours. So, in um, so God does not yield to glory to any to another or praise to idols. Whatever idol think God doesn't look at that. And He can do far better than that. It's only potent. So everyone who has ever lived has committed this error. Sometimes we idolize ourselves. We think that we can do all things and. We should give all glory back to God, whatever we can do. Now, number three, in order to glorify God, we must do the following. If we can. Exercise strength. If we don't exercise strength, we cannot glorify God. For in Hebrew 11, 16 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And we have to love without hypocrisy. In Romans 12, 9, it says, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil and cling to what is good. So, we don't do it hypocritically. But 
we must be done sincerely. And the next one, this is very challenging to each and every one of us. Deny ourselves. In Luke 9.23 says, Jesus said to the disciples, If anyone comes after me, he must deny himself and take up the cross daily and follow me. It doesn't mean that we're to carry the cross all the time. That means we must be in heart and in our spirit to be with him all the time. Every day. And we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice to God. And also in Romans, uh, and this is in Romans 12, Therefore I urge you, brethren, in view of God's mercy, to offer your body as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is the spiritual act of worship. I mean, if we sacrifice ourselves, our time, make ourselves available, that is a form of worshiping God. So what is keeping us from being available for, for God's glory? I fall into this category as well. For every one of us, if possible, we re-examine ourselves and see what has been keeping us from being available for God's glory. Number one, self-centeredness. No, everybody has a tendency of self-centeredness. So, in Philippians uh, 2, 4, it says, Forget yourself long enough to lend a helping hand. Sometimes we remember ourselves too much, so we cannot help others. So the number one enemy of compassion is busyness. So because we are so busy, we do not have time to serve. We have our own agenda, we have our own plans, we have our own dreams. We have our own goals and our own ambitions. So, we don't serve God. So, because of self-centeredness. And also, God, whenever we come, for example, like we see suddenly nobody welcome us. God is telling us that we must make ourselves available for Him. So, this is sometimes how God is telling us or to make opportunity available to us. Number two problem they are facing is perfectionism. In English, it says, if you wait for perfect condition, you will never get anything done. Yeah? Because some of us want everything to be perfect. When the things is just right, you see, when things have already settled down, when my family have already settled down, then I will serve. So if everybody wait things to be in perfect condition, in the end nobody will serve. Now, we must learn from this the good enough principle. It does not have to be perfect for God to bless, to bless us at all, to bless what we can do. We have weaknesses, faults, failures, handicap, you know, Pastor Helping, Pastor. Nikki, Pastor Sue have been teaching about Enoch. Every one of them has fought. But God used them all because they make themselves available. So likewise, we can do the same. So we don't say that we have no talent, nothing this, wait until perfect condition, then we serve. Alright? Now number three, convenience and comfort zone. Oh, I'm healthy, I'm strong. So, Sometimes we forget about God. So this is in you know Luke from Luke uh, 9, chapter 9, 57 to 61. There are three types of characters which our Lord Jesus wants to show to us over here. So number one is the convenience and comfort zone. You see. But when this man says, as they were walking along the road, a man said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. But Jesus being God, he's a discerner. He knows what this man is thinking. So this man is only able to follow Jesus when it is convenient and comfortable to him. But when things get tough, he will show him the power. That maybe Lord Jesus, forget, I forget about it. I will be able to follow you. Now there is also 
Another thing that procrastination. So sometimes we hesitate to do things. We procrastinate. So in Luke 959, Jesus said to another man, Follow me. But the man replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. You see, the father is still, let's say, 40 or 50. He himself is very proud. To wait until the father died to bury the father, how long will it be? It will be another 40, 50 years. So that is 40, 50 years later, then we go and follow Jesus. So what are we So Lord Jesus knows about this. So in Luke 9.15, the man needs the importance of service to Christ. So we should not lay we should not lay before the Lord Jesus and tell him to wait until our children grow up and until our careers are established. Then we say that God, after that, then I serve you. Now while our children are growing up, we should serve the Lord. Some may say that because I have already retired, easy for me to say about it. <laughs> but I have a privilege with that. I only come to Christ only 10 years ago. <laughs> will it be able, will I be able to say the same thing, do the same thing? With what uh, Jesus has been saying? Well, only find the time. Now in Luke 9.16 also says, Jesus said to the men, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. You see, here it means Jesus is asking the men and all of us, we think our priorities. We think our priorities. See, if we're going after these world things, our priority will be for these world things. And we must make an immediate uh, decision. Now, those who are spiritually dead, they can give themselves to tending their own life. Then, if we are spiritually dead, we'll do our own thing. We'll spend most of our priority will be on our own thing. But if we are spiritually alive, we should be tending to the work of the kingdom of God. Now, the fifth thing that may hold us up in, in making us available to God is divide the heart. So in Luke 9, 61, still another man said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Now, this man's response was an excuse to Jesus because he was not great by the love of Jesus and the privileges of serving God's kingdom. In the beginning, when I was uh, sharing with you, in the first verse that I was putting, the, the disciples, most of them, were called by God, immediately they leave their net and follow Jesus. Another good example is Elisha. You know, Elisha, when he um, followed Elijah, prophet Elijah, he go back, he make a very clear statement to the family, he's going to follow Prophet Elijah. So we should learn from what uh, Prophet Elisha said. We should not have an undivided heart, we want to do this, we want to do that. Because God has made us, created us for His glory. So we should be with them. Now, the last one is wrong motivation. Sometimes we serve God because we want to get a name out of it. So if we serve, if we go for self-promotion, if I serve God, everybody will see me conspicuous and so on. And this is against what Pastor Kelvin has said, that I have preached as we call servanthood. When we serve as a servant to people, it doesn't matter. You know, if we want our name to be proclaimed, God said, the reward is just the applause from people. There's nothing from God in heaven. So we should have to serve with a servant heart so that we would not be in conflict all the time, whether it's as a self-promotion or whether it is for God. Now, in order for us, after we have learned all this together, 
Now, what we can do, and this important thing is, we must have a mindset change. So if we don't change our mind from now on, we will always be controlled by what we are thinking. We were thinking in the past. So we must renew our mind. You see, our mind is a neutral ground. And God has not prohibited the devil to occupy our mind. It is the battleground. You know, there is a continuous spiritual battle in our minds. And our thoughts are signal to the spiritual realm. Everything, when, every time when we think, we are sending signal to the spiritual realm. When we are positive, when we say we're to serve God, we are sending a positive message to God. But when we are thinking negatively, or we say that it's not for me to, to serve God, so we are sending a negative uh, message to God. So most of the time, when things are decayed, what are attracted to the decay? The plants. So they will are also attracted to negative or evil thoughts of ours. So from now onwards, if we really think that we should serve God, reject, we renew our mind. You know, we should not think of the negative things. We should not think of uh, that when people say something, we will, uh, all the, the, the things I've shared, all the six things, the negative things, so we should remove them from our mind. So that only the positive thing that we can send good messages to our, our Lord. So when we send a strong signal of desire to be used by God, from our hearts, then God will respond accordingly. So this is very important. So you want, we want a response from God, we must have a strong desire for doing things for God, and not a strong desire to do evil things, or negative things. Now the requirements for being used by God, I learned this from uh, Pastor Rick Rowland also. Number one, we must keep our lives clean. In order to, so we must keep our lives clean. So the first step of being used by God is always personal cleansing. If we have not been doing right and so on, cleanse ourselves with the blood of Jesus so that we are made whole, that God can make use of us. So God uses small vessels, plain vessels, and even broken vessels, but God never used dirty vessels. No, whatever type of vessel that we are, but God never used a contaminated vessel in thought and also in our design, a wrong design. And also in 2 Timothy 29 says that if you keep yourself pure, you will be utensil God can use for His purpose. Your life will be clean and you will be ready for the master to use for every good work. So, that is number one. Keep our lives clean. Number two, keep our eyes open. Open to whom? Open to God. So keep in Psalm 105 verse 4 says, Keep your eyes open for God. Watch for His works. Be alert for signs of His presence. Then we will always be focused on Him. And number three, keep our hearts grateful. Sometimes when things happen, for example, it's my own effort. We never rectify God. So whatever good things we receive or whatever difficulty that we have, we must be grateful to God. If God gives us a difficulty, then God may want to use the opportunity to strengthen us. So whatever situation, we must have a grateful heart. Number four, we keep our purpose firm. What is our purpose? Because God made us, we are, we have to glorify Him. So we keep that. So we are planned for God's pleasure, formed for God's family, created to become like Christ, shaped for service, and made for a mission. So hold firm to it. So don't have divided thoughts and so on. So hold firm to it. That we serve God, our Almighty God. And also, the last one is that keep our minds on Jesus. So focusing less on ourselves, whenever we face difficulty, we focus on the, on the Lord. Don't focus on ourselves. When we focus on our own, we have more problems. But if we focus on God, 
then God will help us to overcome our problem. So when we are serving, so do not give up when things get tough. When we are serving, sometimes people may say all sorts of things against us. But keep our focus on God. We are serving God, we are not serving men. It's very important. So, before my conclusion, I would like to call the worship team. We are uh, ready for the song of Over the Eyes of My Heart. So, as a conclusion, we have God who made himself available for us and to choose us and he selected us for his purpose. So, one of the primary call for us is to be in touch with him, with the Creator, our loving God. And the power that he has in this universe so that it can flow through us. With his love, it will flow out to others and not only ourselves. So this is very important. And we can see the potential, if we can see the potential in us to God and plans that God has for each and every one of us. If we search hard enough, if we meditate, if we have self devotion, we ask God, what is the purpose for us? And we'll be able to serve God. And um, if we are too busy, on the other hand, and we are too busy with our work, our businesses, watching television, entertainment, and being driven by schedules and urgencies of our lives, leaving no time to tap into the power of God, we'll be lost. We'll not be able to serve Him. No matter whatever we have. So when we talk about availability, we talk about time. Do we spend enough time for being available to God? Do we make effort, enough effort for God? Do we Sometimes if we, we also can contribute in terms of cash and kind. And also we can support other people, encourage other people, but don't bring people down. So we encourage each other to serve God even more. And we can pray for people even. And also we can face visitation. And also to go out evangelizing and also to mission. And just next weekend will be a stress on mission. You see, I'm so glad that in the last two weeks, on the 2nd and the 9th of July, we have opened up a lot of counters for the different ministry. So it is a time, opportunity for us to make ourselves available to God. And if we can make God, then we will. So last I would like to share before the, the uh, worshiping team, worship with the song, a video called The Last Day. The last pamphlet. Every Sunday afternoon, after the morning service in the church, the pastor and his 11-year-old son would go throughout the town and hand out evangelistic pamphlets. One Sunday afternoon, when it came time for the pastor and his son to go to the streets with their pamphlets, it was very cold outside and it was raining a lot. The boy dressed up in warm clothes and said, Okay, Dad, I'm ready. And his father said, Ready for what? Dad, it's time to gather our pamphlets and go out. His father replied, oh, Son, it's very cold outside. It's pouring down heavily. The boy looked surprised and asked, But Dad, will people not go to hell even on rainy days? His father replied, Son, I am not going out when it's this cold. Sadly, the boy asked, Dad, can I go? Please, let me. His father hesitated for a moment and then said, Okay, son, you can go. Here are the pamphlets. Take care, son. Thanks, Dad. Then he went out into the rain. This 11-year-old boy walked from door to door of that city giving out pamphlets to everyone he saw. After walking for two hours in the rain, he was soaking wet, but had one last pamphlet left. He stopped on a corner and looked for someone to hand the pamphlet to, but the streets were totally deserted. Then he turned towards the first house he saw and walked from the sidewalk to the door and rang the bell. He rang the bell, but no one answered. He rang again, but no one opened the door. 
He waited, but there was no answer. Finally, this 11-year-old soldier turned his back to leave, but something stopped him. Again, he turned to the door, rang the bell, and knocked even louder on the door. He waited. Something was keeping him on that porch. He rang again, and this time the door opened, slowly. Standing in the doorway was an elderly lady who looked very sad. She asked kindly, What can I do for you, my son? With radiant eyes and a smile that lit up her world, this little boy said, uh, Ma'am, forgive me if I'm disturbing you, but I just want to say that Jesus loves you very much, and I came here to give you my very last pamphlet, which will tell you all about Jesus and his group. Okay, what happened was that the pastor in the church, at the end of the church, was asking, is there anyone here want to give a testimony? There was an old lady sitting at the back who came forward. He said, nobody in here will know me. It's the first time she came to the church. And she was saying that actually what happened was that he was contemplating committing suicide. She was contemplating suicide because she has no husband and she had a, a problem of living on. So she was take, he has taken the rope and about to hang herself when she heard this voice knock on the door of rang the bell first and then knock. So she took quite a bit of time and went to the door, dressed herself up, went to the door and stopped her. And when she read through the pamphlet about how God how Jesus loves her. She came, she was changed, her whole life changed. So she saw the address at the back where the church was. So she came to the church. So that was the testimony of the, of the lady. So just because a young boy made himself available and go and give the last pamphlet and waited for quite a time to give the old lady saves the life of the Holy So imagine if each and every one of us make ourselves available in God, there may be a lot of lives that we can save. So make ourselves available for God's glory. Amen.